Yeah? All right. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Um, oh, sh there we go. I'm kind of new to this whole technology thing. Um, so, yeah. So, my name's Amanda. Um, and this is my talk about a uh, social engineering uh, awareness campaign that I put forth, or was a big part of putting forth in a healthcare facility that I worked in in, uh, in Ohio. So we're going to go over a little bit about how we put in the program, what a lot of the feedback was like, um, and where we got with our metrics as far as um, where we were on with, with zero user education compared to uh, fishing with live fire exercises and um, some uh, prize and award campaigns throughout. If I can get this to go. There we go. So that's my name. Um, this is my one year anniversary for being technically in InfoSec and speaking. Um, and it's been one hell of a year. It's awesome. I've, I've just really enjoyed all of it. It's been great. Um, right now I am a um, <clears throat> uh, network security engineer at Hurricane Labs. Um, if you want a Splunk t-shirt, I'm supposed to be manning the booth, kind of, but just go take a t-shirt because um, we don't have anybody on there. Uh, and I do a lot of stuff with Checkpoint and, and, and that kind of stuff now. A lot of healthcare background previously. Uh, I worked for seven years in a mid-sized healthcare organization. Before that, I was in an ISP. A lot of networking experience. A um, little bit of uh, InfoSec experience over the last two years. So, um, But all, all blue team for the most part. Um, this fishing exercise was the only red stuff that I've done so far, and really it was more purple team um, because, you know, I was also fixing the shit that we found. So, so this is the stuff that I did. Uh, not so much anymore. I was Windows admin, MCITP 2008. Um, I did a fishing program, a lot of purple team stuff, and just a jack of all trades: um, storage, VMware, switching, routing. Uh, you name it, you know, uh, storage, a little bit of everything. <clears throat> and if I lose my voice by the end of the talk, I really apologize. It feels really, really bad right now. So this was our company metrics. Um, around 2,000 employees, um, mostly female, especially in the nurse population. They're, they're majorly uh, female. 30 sites, um, including doctor's offices, clinics. Um, we had two major sites, one, one major main campus hospital and then a, and then a smaller uh, campus that was um, more um, like nursing home type stuff. Um, we, had, we had a good security base already. Um, we had spent three years busting apps coming from zero security and some absolute horror stories that I could share, just not on tape. Uh, and so, so we had some decent security structure already. We just wanted to kind of add on to it um, a little bit at the time for the more for the more difficult stuff. I was really lucky to have some amazing uh, sea level buy-in already. We didn't really have to work very hard. Um, I know that's a lot of gripes in the industry. Is well, how do you make your sea levels care? There's a whole bunch of talks about that. I'm not going to go deep into it. Ours, fortunately, already kind of came from an information security background. So they they knew what had to be done. They knew that we were bad in some areas. So um, we really didn't have a whole lot of fight. A little bit later, I'll talk about some of the um, issues we had with sea level, but they were minor, and this exercise helped them open their eyes as well. And um, really no user education. We did um, some CBTs like once a year for HIPAA purposes. Um, just bullshit, next, 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 next. Yeah, I uh, guessed a C all the time and retook the test if I needed to and then forgot it. And then they gave us a $1,000 budget. They wanted to know if we could create a user education that would help us any before we were going to like pay fish me to come in or or someone like that to actually that professionally provided those services they wanted to see what we could do with a thousand bucks and the knowledge that we had so this is my first fish um 
I did this with zero user education, zero, I didn't tell the help desk I was doing it, my director knew, and my boss knew. That was it. Um, I kind of wanted just a baseline to see, all right, if I send this out, who's going to freak out, and what's exactly going to happen. Um, this was a portal to uh, a scrape of our HR website coming from a Gmail address. I made, you know, our company's IT department at gmail.com. Um, with just a, a, a sentence and a link to an internal address. You hovered over it, it was, you know, 192 dot whatever. And yeah, that's, that's what I did. Um, the, the email addresses that I gathered were with Harvester, uh, the Harvester, which is a Python script that comes with, uh, it's a part of Kali. You can download the Python script by itself. Um, it'll scrape things like LinkedIn, Facebook, Google Plus, um, you name it. It'll scrape a whole, you know, like, uh, your website. It'll scrape for email addresses. Um, and those were the email addresses that I sent to. So all OSINT related stuff. I didn't want to go too deep into it. I didn't want to use any of my insider knowledge. I wanted to use as, as basic as I could. The only thing that I kind of cheated by doing was I used um, uh, our internal mail relay. So 50 emails were sent, and I got 16 usernames and passwords right away. Like I left, I left this first campaign up for I think three or four days. Um, the majority of them were in the first couple hours, just, you know, Active Directory creds just bounce on the screen. And only four reports, which kind of scared the crap out of us. And most of those were people within our department. So this is my second fish. Um, pretty much exactly the same thing. Um, asking them to verify some more information. Um, what I wanted to do was spread this phishing campaign out, and this was before we even had any program set in place at, at all. Um, so I just, just made another one from a Gmail address. And that was the second, second result. So 22%. So Horrible, and only four reports. So we decided we needed a program with some teeth. It creeps me out every time. <laughs> That's a fish, the legitimate fish with teeth. Um, oh. I'm just changing it. Um, <laughs> we needed a program with some teeth. We needed so, so what I had heard is some of these other programs will come in and have a bunch of flashy shit that they, you know, they give you the, they give you, you know, a box kit of here, go, go implement this and teach your users. Um, instead, we threw a bunch of fish puns at them and fished them live. So we had everything, everything fish themed. We had a fishbowl that their names would go in, um, if they reported correctly. Um, they could either report my fishes or they could report legitimate fishes from the internet. Um, and, and some other stuff I'll get into in the next couple slides. We wanted to start out with the definition of fishing for them. This was all um, in the limited amount of uh, information that we gave them about the fishing program. It really didn't um, go out on all the avenues that I had hoped they would. We really didn't, that, that's one of the places that we had issues with sea level buy-in. They're like, well, we don't really need to put it in, you know, this month's newsletter. Who really cares? They'll go on the website and look. Nobody went on our internet, internet and looked. I mean, they, you need to get it out there and make sure they're actually seeing it. I mean, communicating that kind of stuff is a big pain in the butt. Um, I like the word hacker, so I wanted to let them know that we had hackers within the organization, um, and that we were good, and that we were there to help them and teach them. Um, 
and we got um, a lot of really good questions off of this. The biggest thing that we try to drive in is never never rely on them to know what fish is or know what to do about it with in regards to their PC. Reporting it and good IR was the biggest part of it. If they have an easy, concise way to say, I just got this in my email and I clicked on it, that's that's the fastest way that you're going to have to a resolution. I don't care what blinky, I mean, you need blinky boxes and, and good security, but your users are going to see it if it gets through first, if nothing else detects it. And they need to know not to be afraid to report it for fear of getting fired or reprimanded. I'm just going over a little bit of what exactly should be reported. So here are some of the contest rules. Um, I didn't want them to be sending me, you know, hey, I signed up for this newsletter and now I'm trying to get, I'm getting fished by getting this newsletter that I know. We uh, had a couple people that tried to do that, had a couple people that just like forward ship from home. <laughs> no, that doesn't count. <clears throat> and more rules. And this was their favorite part, were the awards. Um, monthly, we had uh, we had awards drawn. Um, every time you submitted um, a fish, your name was put into the fish bowl. Uh, so monthly, they would we had a little coffee shop within the uh, hospital, so they would get a what is it twenty dollars ten dollar card. Um, two, so two winners once a month would get a ten ten dollar card. We had quarterly drawings, which gave them a little bit more. Everybody that was in those first three months also got put into another bowl and were drawn fish themed Red Lobster and Bass Pro. And we figured they could buy something fish related at Amazon for 300 bucks because who wants $300 to uh, Red Lobster? Okay, I'm, I'm sure some people would want $300 to Red Lobster, but not, I, I don't think I would. So the actual fish. Um, I use Social Engineering Toolkit, which there's a couple different things out there that you can use. Um, that's just what I defaulted to because I knew the most about it. Um, you can spoof email, you can attach payloads, you can do a whole bunch of cool stuff that I didn't even get into just because our users didn't, they didn't need that advanced of an attack when they were falling for one line text with a link. Um, so the challenge was though with 2,000 people, to educate all of them, you kind of have to split it up. Um, I did it monthly. Um, which was a lot at some point, <laughs> some points in time, a lot to go through, uh, depending on how many that I sent it to because of reasons that I'll get to in a minute. But this is what they would get. When they gave me their username and password, if they opened the attachment, if they went to the link that I sent them, it would automatically redirect to just a web server sitting out there with a little PowerPoint that they get to go through. Um, and this was this was the most important message that we wanted to get out there, that it's all right, it's part of training. You don't want this to happen when it's a real bad person. You want it to happen when it's us so we can educate you. <laughs> this was the worst part personally for me. Uh, so I was pulling email addresses from Active Directory. I was using set to send them out and set dumps out an XML of who's done what, who's clicked on it, depending on your keeping track of click accounts, um, and you know usernames and passwords that have been given. Keeping track of all of that in different different ways, I used a spreadsheet because I didn't have 
I suck at coding. I don't code well. I don't know how to code. I'm learning very, very, very slowly. Um, but I just did it in Excel and it was horrible. Absolutely horrible. I don't recommend it to anybody. Um, so here's the nine months of spreadsheets and the data. Um, the first two months that I did, the first two fishes, were like uh, July and August the previous year. <clears throat> it took us from August to January to actually get a program in place that they would be okay with. Uh, they wanted to make the rules, they wanted to make it flashy, they wanted to do the marketing information. So it took us that long to be able to get up to this speed. Again, I picked, uh, I can't remember how many random users, it says on the next slide. Did the exact same thing though. It was a tax, a tax email. Um, right around when W2s came out. Same thing. Gmail address, put important, importance high, and then it was just a, uh, a login to our HR page again. They got 322 <laughs> usernames and passwords. And this was still with no user education. This was the first legitimate fish to a thousand people. And I only kept, I kept this campaign up for five days, and that's how many usernames and passwords that I got. And it only takes one. Um, and, and to, like, it was, it was a struggle because I was sitting there behind my computer going, this is awesome, I'm getting all these usernames and passwords. And my boss is like, what is wrong with you? Like, but uh, they, they're giving me their stuff, and I just, it's so easy. And, uh, no, that's not how you, just make sure you don't tell anybody that you enjoy this so much. Um, so it was not good percentages. Like, we would hope that we would get more people reporting it than actually clicking on it and give me, giving me their Active Directory username and password. So this is the second one. Um, we were sending out free gifts. Uh, I figured Valentine's Day, this is, a, this is a good one. Still, oh, almost 90 usernames and passwords. March. This one, um, this one was interesting. Mostly because, of, has anybody ever heard of March of Dimes, right? Um, we did a lot of, uh, fundraising at the hospital for March of Dimes, and it started in January, so they were, you know, emails from departments and department leads and you name it going out about March of Dimes, and I think the reason that this one didn't do so well was because, I know I was doing it, just if you saw March of Dimes, just delete, 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 I mean, at that point they didn't even care. They weren't reading the emails, if they had already given, if they... Um, if they didn't want to give or whatever, they just they didn't care anymore. They were just deleting the email. So I saw a really, really low amount. I mean, on on over a thousand emails, I got four. So just low turnout overall. <clears throat> this was a this was big for us. This was the f after 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 our um, program started. This was the first real fish caught and reported. Not from us. Um, this was an email sent to the director that caught it, letting him know how amazing, and, and the reason he sent it to us, because he knew we were doing this campaign. <clears throat> it was an email that came from somebody that he regularly does business with. They didn't have a have any projects going, I, I think it was our, um, uh, like our maintenance department. They didn't have anything going on with them currently, and it seemed kind of odd. So instead of click on it, he sent it to my boss, and we just used it, we asked him first, but we used him as an example. We're like, can we kind of send this out and show people that, you know, this, this is awesome, this is what you should be looking for, kind of just used for reinforcement. Um, so it was, it was a real win for us. <clears throat> this was one of my favorites. Um, I used, like, I, I had bought something from PayPal or something, and I just 
copied the HTML out of my, out of my, uh, out of the email that I had gotten and used that and just edited it a little bit. We're buying some fine china and we're sending it to some dude in South Africa, uh, for 575 bucks. Yeah, some Nigerian prince won some fine china. <clears throat> Actually had a lady call up. She had canceled her Kohl's card and she had canceled her PayPal. Like she had called PayPal for fraud. I felt kind of bad. <laughs> but it was still pretty fun. Like I, like after the first couple only text based emails, this was the first HTML one that I had put in. Um, so we gave her like a complimentary gift card <laughs> for all of her troubles. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, that was a fun one. <clears throat> and we were only looking for reporting on this one. There was no, um, there was no credential harvesting built into the links. It was all, I, I just want, every, every link pointed to, um, the training material. So really I just wanted to see how many people would report. And pretty good. Got 261. Still only 23%, but based off of what the 4% that we were competing with, not, not too shabby. This is a professional third party pen test company that pen tested our hospital. Um, great local company. They, I asked them if I could use this and say I kind of want to talk about all, all that we've been through. And they said, sure, go ahead. I, this was also a, a very proud moment for, for our department. Um, they sent it to 41 emails. Nobody was fished. It was, it was great. Um, they actually sent two. That was only, that was only the first one. The second one, technically, depending on who you talk to, um, only one person was fished or none. They had like a set. This is when we're supposed to leave the website up to fish people. They accidentally just left it up longer, and somebody got in. Um, I count it still. I mean, they would have clicked on it if you know if the tagger left it up for a month or whatever. <clears throat> And this is when I talk about incident response. The most important part of all of this. This was, again, the third party professional pen test. Three minutes after they sent it out, we had a report already of when it, of, of it coming in. Eleven minutes later, we already had the domain blocked because we had an incident response plan in place of what we needed to do, where the help desk needed to tell the engineers what to do, say, hey, we, we kind of got this, can you look into it? And the fact that we saw that it wasn't a, a, a campaign from us, you just go in and block it right away. <clears throat> so people are going to get in, they're going to get credentials, they're going to fish your users, but the fact that you have good incident response is the most important part. So on, on to July then. Um, this is another example. I bought some crap on Google Play. I just used uh, used all their HTML, and it's not that's not hard. It's it's. Uh, it needs to look a little bit better now that we're getting further into the user training. We wanted to kind of ramp up their knowledge of what a fish could look like. It's not all just going to be text and a link. Shit, I forgot to put the percentages on here. I knew I forgot something. It's been a long week. <laughs> Ah, this one's great. Who doesn't like 20% off of Jimmy John's? We have Jimmy John's that opened right next door to the hospital. That's perfect. This one wasn't capturing credentials either. All I did was put the training material in a PDF attached to it. Um, 
And I got people calling like crazy. Just, <laughs> I can't believe I fell for this. We didn't keep track of really any of those metrics. But we did have 31 reports. <clears throat> Here's September's fish. Um, set actually has some built-in templates in it. Uh, this is one of the built-in templates that you can choose. Um, and I did the same thing. I took the training material, attached it as a PDF, and sent it out. Just picked the name of the uh, our nursing our head nursing supervisor instead. <clears throat> and this technically was the last one before I left that company. So I just said, fuck it, and send it to everybody. <laughs> so yay, graphs. I hope you guys can see this a little bit better. This is the third time I've given this presentation. Um, and the first couple times, the graphs were really crappy. So my, my favorite part was um, not necessarily the purple. The purple is the email sent. Blue is fish, and red is reported. Blue just disappears. That, that's exactly what we were going for. And again, it took me forever to do this freaking Excel. <laughs> and to keep track of who I sent an email to, if they clicked on it or not, if they gave me a username and password or not, if they reported it or not, for every month. Yes. Yeah. What we wanted to do is kind of ramp up the marketing. We we hadn't gotten to the point where we were putting up any posters. I wanted to do, we had um, speaking sessions where I kind of wanted to do a presentation to talk more about it. Because at that point, it was only in a newsletter and by word of mouth. Um, I think a lot of people didn't know about um, the program itself. So, And I didn't realize this until after I was done and actually compiled all the data that Holy crap, nobody's reporting it anymore. And then the fish and reported numbers. First couple months were rough. <laughs> so what I've learned, I'll let you read the XKCD real quick. <laughs> So originally, I, I, I searched, um, you get more flies with honey than vinegar, and realized that that's not really true <laughs> anyway, so I had to put this up here. But I've, I've talked to a couple people that are working companies, that their fishing programs end up having like a wall of shame. And, you know, they most, most fish employees a month, or, or whatever. That's not going to help your incident response. Nobody's going to want to talk to you. You're going to be the asshole in IT that nobody wants to report it to. That's not helping anybody. The asshole in security that nobody wants to talk to. <laughs> you need positive response. You need positive outlook. We, we were fortunate to have a really positive company anyways. Um, just really poor marketing skills within the company. Someone is always going to click. Um, you want to treat your incident response like you've already been breached and have a plan. Have a plan of action for what every level of your IT infrastructure should be doing. Um, a lot of places require you to have IR in place. Um, how many people actually test it is probably a lot fewer. Um, being able to do this was able, was the, because the first couple times that we, that I had, I had done the fish, where there wasn't really any IR. It didn't get to any of our engineers until, you know, two or three days later at that point. That's, that's, that could be a lot of data lost. And I actually pulled that stat from, that's why I like this year's, um, the BF, uh, the Verizon data breach report, DBIR. 
Um, they had a lot of fish puns in, in the report. I'm like, this was written specifically for me. Nobody's exempt. How we got the, the program on track faster is when I got the username and password of our CEO with one of the plain text emails. He was a CISO at one point. Not good. I got our IT director, our IT assistant director also. It was a Monday. There, there's, there's actually a whole, um, breakdown, and I know a couple of people have written about it or given talks about it, the breakdown of when they're more susceptible, um, to actually give you their usernames and passwords, like, early in the morning after a three day weekend, because they're just trying to get through their emails. I think like Wednesday afternoons or something like that, they're more susceptible. And getting the point across was really difficult. This goes back to all the marketing stuff. Um, the the program game thing, um, Ben 10 does a talk on it. Um, Bill Gardner has a great book on it that me and a couple of my friends actually were lucky enough to be a part of. Um, the gamification of it. I, I think draws a lot of people, but you have to keep the ball rolling, and that's what we learned from not having so many reports done. Another thing that I kind of wanted to do was um, figure out where our department, as, as far as the metrics go, anyways, instead of using the Excel spreadsheet, is uh, see where the departments fell. Like it, Surprisingly, one of the least susceptible departments was housekeeping because they didn't use email. So it didn't really matter. You know, they, we had planned on doing like, um, regular social engineering, uh, other me uh, methods of social engineering as well. Um, tailgating, vishing, whatever. Uh, we hadn't gotten to that part. All of this was, was purely fishing. <laughs> this is for you, Adrian. <laughs> Um, better or worse than the fish picture? <laughs> yeah, it would be really weird if we were wearing the same thing. <laughs> Party tonight, though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not a one-size-fit-all. I talked to somebody that worked um, for a large credit card company about this program, and they're like, we can't put this in place. Nobody will allow us to fish our own employees. Like, that's bullshit. How, how do you expect them to learn how not to be fished? He's like, well, we have these huge call centers that are paid to be on the phone with customers because we never don't have customers calling in. They don't have time to click on a link in the middle of whatever their call is or schedule is that's losing the, com the, the customer money. They don't realize in the long run, it would not be losing customer money. Their, well, them money, right? The, the company money. Um, that's another thing that I, you have to have really good C-level buy-in all the way up. Not, not just C-level, but people that are willing to go and talk to them about this. <clears throat> Definitely what I would change. Um, I didn't, didn't write down exactly what I wanted people to do or I had expected them to do for instant response right away. Um, I was I was getting people just walking up in the hallway. Oh yeah, somebody told me the other day that they clicked on that. <laughs> All right, maybe I should write out some stuff for the help desk as well. Um, write out stuff for people that are representatives of IT, so our directors. Um, people were in like uh, healthcare informatics that. Everybody says, oh, you're in IT. They don't realize that they don't know really what we know. Um, that was one of, one of the major things that I would definitely change. More automation because fuck spreadsheets. Um, adding vishing and physical and definitely more measurements. Um, Fishing Frenzy is a product that I was helping uh, write some documentation for. Um, a dude from Acuvant wrote it, uh, him and a couple of his friends. Um, it's a great product. Uh, 
I kind of wanted to use that to tie into Active Directory and the set XML reports so it would just do it all for me. And I just changed jobs and got busy and ne never got around to it, but I think that's on the roadmap. And all of this is on my blog if you want to download it. I don't see if you go to my blog, I don't really pay attention to it, but I wanted to give everybody access. I know a couple people, like uh, one dude I know works for a small credit union. He just, because I, I, I had stripped off all of our company logos and every, everything specific to our company, you just download it and use it for your users, edit whatever you want. I don't care. Just, it was, it was cheap and easy for us. Anybody would be able to implement it depending on if you have the okay in your organization. Um, this is up on, what is it, SlideShare? I think is the popular one. This is on SlideShare. If you want to click on these links so you don't have to type them all in. Um, where I got some of my information, Ben Penn's talk, um, a couple different articles online, um, Bill's book, and then the Fishing Frenzy link. And that's it. Questions? Oh, whoa. Wait. Scott. Okay, so the question was if I was given okay to use like Jimmy John's on the other sites. They gave me like, what is it, what is it called? Artistic, uh, yeah, yeah, they're like, we trust you. Just, sure, uh, just let us know when you're gonna send it out so we could board the help desk. They didn't care what they looked like. Nope. Oh, you actually asked the company. Oh, yeah. oh no. <laughs> really? Oh, no, they didn't care. I don't think legally you have to. Do you know? If legally? I hope not. Don't tell Jimmy Johns, please. Yeah. Yeah, don't don't tell any company what I do. <laughs> okay. Right, so I'm not going to repeat all that for the camera. <laughs> when it comes to consistency of the reporting from the users, um, just the help desk phone number, help desk number was listed everywhere. Where it seemed to lack was we didn't give the help desk the proper information when it came to what they should do next with those calls and emails. Because that was the main method of communication with our user base and us was through the help desk. Um, a lot, a, a good majority, depending on where they came from, would either come to me or another one of my coworkers because he was like a physician liaison. So all the physicians would contact him directly. Um, but as far as the user base goes, most of them would call or email. But getting that into one format from the help desk to be able to use was a challenge at first. But it got it got better with the more practice they had. Very cool. <laughs> Go ahead. Hi, Aaron. Woo. Uh, and I thought, I got a couple things. Uh, <laughs> cross correlation of threads, so you're taking a 
Great. Uh, are you are you verifying those against uh, you know, the tests and so on? Are you going through? I didn't do all of them. I spot checked. Okay. When it comes to correlation of creds, I spot checked against Active Directory, um, and then that was immediately the if if a director requested so. They were allowed to know who was fished in their department, but they were also given what not to say and what we were trying to go for as far as the goals went, and to tell them they needed to hurry up and change their password. How would you suggest uh, tackling a situation like that where they are so embarrassed or otherwise bad about how they didn't do anything to clear that something happened? Well, just in case you open or see this next time, <laughs> you may want to do this. Um, we had we had people not only report it, but after, before they reported it. They forwarded it to their whole department saying, hey, did you get this? Does this, link, does this link work? And then, boom, their whole department got it too. And she denied the whole thing. You, there's, there's, there's headers. It tells me that you did this, and I can see that you clicked on it. Um, we just kind of spot checked that department and gave them a one on one training. Okay. I think we have time. What time is it? We got time. We got like ten minutes. Go for it. You know, just beyond the the basic link that your campaign you know started with and ramped up with other things, did you ever progress into more of a a payload kind of campaign where you sent out what is the app or or doc? I had planned on it eventually. But then I left. Um, I it was difficult enough to get because you want everybody to have the same opportunity and the same level of training, but you don't want to send 2,000 emails every month. You can't break it out into like 100 people every month because that will take you more than a year to hit everybody on the first level. So at this point, we were like on the two and a half ish level where we were adding attachments. Actually, putting HTML in, they were a good year away from anything more advanced than that, just because we still had seen people giving engineers and passwords. There's a lot of automated systems out there that are like turn up you know, dozens of Yahoo accounts uh, that somehow work with somebody. Uh, you know, email, uh, <laughs> well, we don't we don't attack where it's coming from. We attack where it's going to. Like we block where it's going to. So that email at the email and the link that came in was like a Bitly link or something. Open up the sandbox, clicked on it, see where it was trying to go to and what it was trying to do, and we black holed the DNS from there. We didn't care about where it was coming from because there's no way that you're going to be able to do that. Or I could, I'd love to block all of Yahoo and AOL, but. Any more? Come on, let's go. Wait a minute, he's next. <laughs> All right. So you mentioned you had to use the for password that they got there. Did you have to, did you ever actually directly address that you wanted to actually target the word directly? Did there ever a conversation ever to go to an IP or actually screw the process and just do it? No. <laughs> <laughs> they were fine with harvesting real credentials. Yeah. And boys, we learned some of our passwords were <laughs> like, oh my god. And then we we also did um like IT security week or whatever. Um we, we had some games out there for user education that listed like the top twenty 
most common passwords, 100, 100, 1, 2, 3, or whatever, 101, uh, password, 1, 2, 3, and uh, gave prizes out for people being able to guess them. And there were countless people who said, I should, I should probably change my passwords. <laughs> yeah, you have four of them up there. <laughs> yes? Right. I don't know how. Yeah, I don't know how to repeat that whole thing either. So I'm sorry for anybody who watches this online. Um, one of the things that we tried to do is the reason I had that giant ass spreadsheet was so I could see month by month if somebody would consistently fail and fit and get fished, their department would get more targeted training like a one-on-one -on -one session for 15, 20 minutes, whatever. If you didn't get fished three times in a row, you were done for a while. Like, I, I, I would remove you from the list of being fished. It was just, with 2,000 people, again, a giant pain in the ass. Right. A lot. Yeah. Right. True. Damien. Ooh, a password analysis other than they were really crappy. Oh really? No, no. I just uh, I just took the XML files and realized that they were really shitty. And that at the point of me leaving, they were trying to implement better password policies. But when it's a doctor-driven business and they're the ones that are making all the money, they could care less. They don't want to type that much of a password. Right. Something. Or summer, fall, spring, year. Well, I mean, from an IT perspective, we don't want to make two pounds. We don't want secretaries to have to handle those security care. No, but we're really going for uh, password saves, too. Yeah, and we did. We did have uh, fingerprint readers, whatever. But especially some of the stuff that the doctors had to do. You didn't have to have two-factor off for giving super cool meds. Yeah, that's an... Uh, and a lot of the 
Random password generator. <laughs> yeah. But you play one on TV. <laughs> Thank you, everybody.